Hey guys, Peter here, and we have another knife review for you today. Uh, today we have the CRKT Ripple 2, which is the frame lock, and it is by Ken Onion. It does a lot of great designs. Uh, most of his are for Kershaw, but this is a CRKT model. A uh, personal favorite of mine, just picked it up not too long ago. Uh, so let's start you guys off with some specs first off. Overall length is six and a half inches. The blade length is two and three quarter inches. The blade steel is Akuto 440. Um, it is a drop point. It is a true hollow grind. You can see when I bounce the light off of that. Very nice. Beautiful overall design and flow of the knife. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the total weight is 2.4 ounces, which is pretty light and personal favorite of mine because of that. Um, it's a frame lock, which you should be able to see here. There are no liners in this. Stainless steel handles, so it's surprising that they got the weight all the way down to 2.4 ounces on that. A lot of skeletonization and a lot of really deep uh, ridge work in there. Um, it is unassisted. It uses IKBS bearings, which uh, I believe stands for Internal Knife Bearing System or something of the sort. Uh, okay, so that takes care of the basic specs. Now, uh, let's get into the nitty-gritty here. First impressions of the knife, we'll talk about... There we go. We'll talk about aesthetics, shall we? Absolutely beautiful. I we'll love the stylings. Ken Onion is known for his organic um, styles, so you have a lot of nice flowing lines that you'd see in nature and just really, really nicely done there as far as aesthetics go. Like I said before, you've got a lot of skeletonization. Let's get this up a little bit closer for you. Got a lot of skeletonization and just really deep groove marks, which also double as a nice grip. Got those little drill holes tapped all the way clean through. Flipper there works beautifully. There you go. You can see that's straight through. It is a flow through open pillar construction. We've got two spacers in the back here, your standard torques, not sure exactly on the size of those. We have a non-tubed lanyard hole. Uh, by the way guys, allergies are acting up, so sorry in advance if I sound a little little stuffed up here. Uh, the blade is very, very thin, as is the overall knife, which I absolutely love. Let's show you the lock up on that real quick while I'm thinking about it. That's insane. <laughs> uh, that's almost a 100% lockup on that, which is a little excessive, and I'll talk about that in a second, but let's stick with the stylings for a minute here. As I said before, Ken Onion is known for his really organic designs, um, and I like that a lot. It really adds to a nice flow of the knife, uh, which is great in my opinion. Uh, and it continues all the way down into the blade really, really nicely. If you can see that it just carries that flow all the way through, and it's done really, really well. The blade style I love. It's drop point, and it's got a nice little belly to it, so it's a nice usable edge, and that tip is razor, razor sharp. Let's see if you can see that. Just goes to nothing, that tip, and it's perfect for opening boxes and pretty much any everyday cutting task. Now, for a quick size comparison, we have another one of his knives. We have the Kershaw Leak. Personal favorite of mine as well. I really do like Ken Onion stuff. Um, so there's your little size comparison there. Let's try and line that up for you. So it's a little bit smaller than the Leak. I don't remember exactly how big the Leak is, but it looks about maybe a quarter inch bigger to half an inch bigger. Now, uh, one key difference here is that this is not assisted. It is completely manual which makes it legal in most states as far as that's concerned, besides the crazy ones that only allow slip joints. Uh, the pocket clip here is where I'm going to start some of my gripes. So, let's see if you can see that. But the pocket clip... Oh, come on, focus for me. The pocket clip runs just past... There we go. Just past the edge of the handle itself, which aesthetically bugs me. Um, functionally, works fine, but that just bugs me. That's just how I am. Uh, and also, just the style of the pocket clip. I like the way it matches the frame, or sorry, the uh, the handle scale. But, uh, 
I don't know, this, this little bump here for the spring, it just doesn't look that good to me. It looks a little funky and out of place, but that's just me. Now, as you can see, it's relatively deep carry. That's about what's going to show out of your pocket. So virtually nothing, which is pretty nice, especially for such a small knife, you'd expect as much. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is, yeah, this is a little restrictive. It is only right side tip down carry. That is the only option you're getting. It is non-reversible in any sense of the word, which uh, it kind of sucks. But for us righties out there, I mean, we're good. You lefties, I'm sorry in advance. Um, continuing some of my gripes. Now, I got this literally just the other day. I think yesterday even. Um, and it was really stiff. If I just flick it, it goes. And it locks in place. And like I said, there's that lock up again, nice and solid. But when I first got it, that was not the case at all. It took a lot of force and it was killing my finger to open it, which is never a good thing. Now, those, I, those uh, IKBS, those bearings inside there, I've heard great things about them, but it just wasn't what I was expecting. It was a little bit stiffer than I'm used to. Now, I've been using a, a, a Benchmade Griptilian up to this point, so maybe getting a little spoiled on those, but those are, uh, uh, what are those, the bronze bushings or whatever, the, uh, not bearings, but just really smooth washers. Uh, but honestly, that felt smoother than this, so I was a little concerned at first. <clears throat> It did loosen up after a while, which I was very excited about. They're still working on that. Something else that was just a little too much for me. This insane uh, frame lock here, that is almost a 100% lockup, is insanely stiff, and it still kind of is. To open it takes a lot of force. I mean, a lot. When I first got it, it was 100% two hands to close. I just couldn't open it with just one hand. Really, really stiff. I even had to bend it over uh, hyper extend the bar a little bit to loosen it up which normally you should never have to do but it was the only way I was gonna be able to open this thing with one hand and that's something else to note to keep it that organic flow there is no lock bar stabilizer there's no hinderer style disc or anything in here so if you put too much force on that which is difficult to do trust me it's very stiff uh, but if you put too much force on it you can hyper extend it and bend that out and you might lose that lock up entirely so keep that in mind now, I'm going to zoom in here and see if you can see this. Alright, so that little detent in there, there you go, you can see it. That little ball right there that this catches on. There we go. That was protruding so much, and because of how stiff this liner was, when I was able to force this open with one hand and get it, it would get stuck right there. Now, this is kind of hard to show on camera, but it would get to there, and then to close it, it would take so much force, I thought it was still completely locked. Anytime you have to put that much force with one hand to close a knife, you run the risk of cutting yourself because you want to get a better grip on it to really push down, and that's when your fingers get in the way. So that was a concern of mine as well. Though again, fortunately it has loosened up a bit, and it's working better, though I definitely had to tinker with it a bit. Threw some WD-40 on there and hyperextended this lock bar a bit to loosen things up. Besides that, and again, that's partly a personal preference. I like my knives really, really smooth and slick and to feel like there's nothing there at all. Maybe you like a stiffer lockup. I don't know. It's up to you. But um, that was my main gripe. Other than that, beautiful knife overall. It is nearly perfect for an EDC size knife. You don't need a lot for opening boxes, cutting some twine, stuff like that. Is this a heavy use knife? No, it most certainly is not. Um, when I was tweaking with it to do some stuff, I realized, see if I can put this here and you'll see it, if I tried to bend it to check for blade play, I can not only completely move the blade, but I can flex the, skip, the uh, frames on either side. I will actually be able to bow those out a bit. I put enough torque on this. I wasn't applying all that much force, to be perfectly honest with you, and I expected a bit more out of it, but it's a really thin knife. I guess you can only expect so much. If you look, the only screws in this are these two way back here. So all you have up here is this pivot. And, I mean, it's just not quite enough. So if you really started, I mean, obviously, never recommended to use your knife as a pry bar, but if you were in a situation where you had to, not only is this 
super, super thin hollow grind going to snap on you. But you could just bend this to the point of that blade just flopping around in there. And that's also not a good place to be. So, I mean, keep that in mind. It's a smaller knife. It is not meant for heavy use. But for what it is used for, it works great. Opening boxes, that tip is absolutely perfect. Ken Onion's blades are beautifully designed for EDC stuff. So opening boxes, cutting open uh, envelopes, it makes a great letter opener. Um, small string entwined, stuff like that. Perfect for it. Absolutely perfect. Um, in fact, let's talk about that blade a little bit. This came pretty darn sharp. Uh, let's see. Should have some paper lying around. To show off for you guys. Again, this is fresh out of the box, just got it yesterday. I can go pretty slowly and still get some nice cuts off of it. Nice little shavings. So it was pretty darn sharp. Not razor sharp by any means, but very, very sharp for right out of the box. Very happy with that. So no complaints there. The hollow grind is ideal for slicing. Obviously, it does weaken the blade a little bit, especially on... I mean, this thing is thin, guys. Eighth inch. A little bit less, maybe. Come on, there we go. So it's thin. I mean, you don't have a lot there. And when you get further down here, because we have a swedge as well, which fortunately is not very aggressive until you get down to the tip, but it's a thin blade, guys. <laughs> Do not use this as a pry bar. You want to fillet a fish with this? By all means. Do not use this to, you know, start turning flathead screws. If you use it for what it's intended for, it's an amazing little EDC. If you try and make it do something it doesn't want to, you're probably going to break it. Now, I've heard some great things about this, and I'm excited to carry it in the future. Like I said, I've only had it for a day, and I've already gotten some good use out of it. So I'm excited to see, you know, how it performs in the future. But as of right now, overall impressions... Nice little EDC. It does what it advertises to do. It should maintain a nice edge with that Akuto 440. And I'm excited to use it in the future. So yeah, I'd highly recommend this knife to anyone starting out. Uh, the list price is, I think, around 50 for this. This is the Ripple 2. Uh, the main difference between this and the uh, Ripple 1 is that this is a frame lock and that the original one was just a liner lock with I think aluminum scales and stainless uh, stainless liners whereas this is all stainless here so I think that's the main difference you're gonna get there um, and that one runs a little bit cheaper I believe so if you want to start there I'd say go for it uh, and I even considered getting that one first but I mean I had a really nice sale on this got this for a nice price so I'm very happy with that um, but you know up to you guys where you want to start with it but uh, yeah I highly recommend it I say go for it can't really go wrong with anything by Ken Onion. I love all of his stuff. But again, personal preference. I just really, really like his style. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed, guys. We'll have some more reviews coming. Maybe even that uh, that leak that you saw a little bit earlier. I got him yesterday, too, in the same package. Sorry, I didn't do an unboxing, but eh, didn't really have the time. So unfortunately, you guys didn't get the joy of opening that with me. So until next time, guys, hope you enjoyed. Please leave a, a like and share with your friends if you're into this kind of stuff. And look out for anything new. Have a good one, guys.